It's been six months since I bought a Bird Buddy Smart Bird Feeder, and in that time, it's become one of my favorite tech products I've ever bought. And I'm gonna take you through why that is, the best features, downsides, and ultimately, who I think should buy a Bird Buddy. Now, the first feature to talk about is this feeder's design and the setup experience. Setup was pretty easy. The main feeder comes in two parts, the feeder housing and then the camera module, which you'll need to charge up before using. I found everything to be well-designed, from the flap at the back where you pour in your bird seed, and typically I've had to replace my bird seed about every month or two. And that really depends on the season and how many birds visit your feeder. The tapered scoop is nice and ergonomic and easy to pour bird seed into the feeder. And then the perch is easy to remove for cleaning. And the camera module magnetically attaches to the Bird Buddy housing. Both the housing and camera module are weatherproof and can operate from negative 5 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 20 degrees Celsius and up to 50 degrees Celsius or 120 degrees Fahrenheit. You will need to make sure you have good Wi-Fi signal where you place your Bird Buddy, which uses the 2.4 gigahertz band of your Wi-Fi router. And this is because the photos and videos it takes are not stored locally, but to the cloud. Now, before you can start using your Bird Buddy, you'll likely need to update its software via the iOS and Android app. And when I did this for the first time, it did take a while. Another thing that was a bit weird was at the time when I set mine up, the assembly instructions were included in the app, but the app didn't actually guide me through them during the setup process. Though the Bird Buddy app has changed quite a bit since I got it, so this might have already been fixed. Now, once you've got the Bird Buddy's camera module all charged up and the feeder is full of bird seed, you're pretty much good to go. Now, all you have to do is wait for the birds to appear. And in my case, this did not take long. After installation, the main way you'll interact with the Bird Buddy is through the Bird Buddy app, which is available for iOS and Android devices, as well as iPad and Android tablets. Though the Bird Buddy app hasn't been optimized for tablets just yet, though at least on Android tablets, you can force it to run in full screen, which looks way better than the alternative. When the Bird Buddy alerts you to a new bird visit, you'll get what's called a postcard. It uses AI to determine the best shots to send you throughout the day and is optimized to only send you a few postcards every day. So your phone shouldn't get bombarded with a bunch of notifications. In the six months I've had mine, it's captured so many great shots of birds and yes, bird butts as well, which six months later are still just hilarious. The photos you can download from the Bird Buddy are a 1944 by 2592 resolution and they show some detail in the birds. You can even pick up on the eyelashes of this titmouse, for example. But these photos are not DSLR quality or even modern phone camera quality. And I would love to see Bird Buddy release an upgraded pro camera module at some point for those of us nerds who want higher res photos and videos. The Bird Buddy will also automatically recognize the bird in the photos and videos that it captures, which you can see at the bottom of your postcard. After swiping through all the photos and videos of a postcard, you can then decide to save them all, download them to your device, discard the postcard, or select edit, which will allow you to save certain photos and videos to your collections. The edit option is also where you can reclassify the bird if the bird buddy misclassified it. It's been pretty accurate though in my experience so far. I find I only need to reclassify a bird if I got a blurry photo or there was some situation with multiple birds in the photo that were really close to the camera. The edit flow I think could still use a bit of UX tweaking, but overall the flow of going through the postcards has been streamlined in the six months I've had my bird buddy. Now, while you can monitor the live feed of your Bird Buddy, this will lead into your battery life and the Bird Buddy does take a bit to wake up as well. So unless you hardwire your Bird Buddy into power, I wouldn't recommend using that live feed feature all of the time. Postcards are a much better way to enjoy your birds in my experience. And the best part about saving postcards is at the time of recording, they're saved to Bird Buddy's cloud for free. I haven't run into any cap on the amount of photos and videos I can save. Though do note, postcards are automatically discarded after seven days if you take no action on them. Moving on to the rest of the Bird Buddy app, the next tab over from the Inbox tab where postcards are kept is called Collections. This is where you can see all of your saved photos and videos from your different birds. 
and learn more about them as well, like what type of food they like and what they even sound like. The next tab is called Bird Buddy Explorer, where you can add new bird species to your collections as you travel around the world with Bird Buddy's network of public feeders. I played around with this feature a bit and have really liked seeing all the different types of birds from around the world, especially the feeder I've been following in Hawaii. But I do wish there was a way to separate those postcards from the postcards I get from my local Bird Buddy feeder. Same thing with the collections tab. I wish you could split out your local birds from the birds you collected via Bird Buddy Explore. The next tab is what I call Bird TikTok, which is pretty self-explanatory and better than actual TikTok because it's just full of awesome birds and occasionally some squirrels. The next tab over is the community tab, which is exactly like your inbox feed, but made up of posts from around the world from the Bird Buddy community, which is pretty cool. All right, and the next feature to talk about is actually battery life. Now, my unit came pre-installed with a solar roof, which you'll need to plug the Bird Buddy camera module into using the attached USB-C cord. And overall, it's worked really well. And you can see when your Bird Buddy is charging in the settings page of the Bird Buddy app. I've only had to charge my Bird Buddy's 3,800 milliamp hour lithium ion battery once in a three month period during the summer. And now that it's fall going into winter here in the Northern Hemisphere, I'm finding I need to charge my Bird Buddy about every four to six weeks, but that of course will depend on your local temperature as well as how much sun you get during the day. But in my experience so far, the solar roof does work and does actually make a difference. One day I noticed my battery went down to 20%, but then went back up to 50% after we got two full days of sunshine. Now, another thing I mentioned earlier in the video is you can directly power the Bird Buddy via its USB-C app. And when you do that, you can view its live stream continuously without taking a hit on battery, obviously. And if that's something you're interested in pursuing, I'll leave a link in the description below to some really long USB-C cords that should be perfect for that purpose. All right, so that's everything I've liked about the Bird Buddy over the past six months. Now let's talk about some other issues I've had with it. One slightly annoying thing about the Bird Buddy's design is it allows the birds to get too close to the camera when they hop in the feeder. Even with the larger rail attachment, which Bird Buddy released during the six months I've had my Bird Buddy, birds still have a habit of sitting in the feeder. Though with the suet ball feeder attachment, I have attracted more types of birds than I was expecting. The only issue I have with that attachment though is it sort of blocks part of your view a bit. All right, now there are a few more features that Bird Buddy has added to their app and overall experience, but you will need to pay for them with their Bird Buddy Pro subscription, which costs $30 a year or $2.99 a month here in the US. With Bird Buddy Pro, you can ignore selected species of birds. You'll get 10 guest slots, so you can add even more friends and family members to be able to view your Bird Buddy. You'll be able to unlock all of the remote feeders in Bird Buddy Explore. Bird Buddy Pro also unlocks Frenzy Mode, where in exchange for a bit worse battery life, your Bird Buddy will send you more postcards throughout the day. And lastly, with Bird Buddy Pro, you'll get high res 1080p video of your birds. Now, I haven't upgraded to Bird Buddy Pro yet, though I probably will just given the amount of family member interest in seeing my Bird Buddy feed. Bird Buddy is also set to launch a bird feed subscription with different feeds designed to attract different birds. The feed subscription hasn't launched yet at the time of recording, but you can sign up on their website to be notified when it starts shipping. So those are all the downsides and a bit more about Bird Buddy Pro, but now let's talk recommendations. So do I recommend getting a Bird Buddy? Well, 100% yes. I have loved using this product. It's one of those rare tech products that makes you feel great while using it without any negative side effect, like you have with smartphones, for example. I've had so much fun collecting all of the postcards from my bird visitors. It feels a lot like Pokemon. You really do want to catch them all. And every time you get a new bird species, I promise you, you're going to light up with excitement. So if you want a smart bird feeder, I do think the Bird Buddy, that's the one to get. 
Not only because its AI captures great photos and videos, but because of its great app, which will automatically categorize all your bird stuff and give you access to some pretty great BirdBuddy community features. Plus, BirdBuddy is a company dedicated to just this experience and this product. They're not some security camera company that just decided to slap one of their cameras into a bird feeder. And it shows with their excellent designed app, great add-ons, and their dedication to birds, like with their Heartbeat project, which you can access by going to live.mybirdbuddy.com to see a live look at the global bird buddy feeder network. It has tens of thousands of active feeders and well over 300 species spotted worldwide. The company hopes it's one of its first steps towards aiding bird conservation by giving scientists access to reliable and plentiful data captured from everybody's bird buddy. The company also plans to expand to a smart hummingbird feeder early next year, which I cannot wait for. The Bird Buddy comes in two colors, speckled blue and matte yellow. The Bird Buddy also comes in several packages, and the one I'd recommend getting is the package with the solar roof. It's really made a difference in my experience. I've only had to charge my Bird Buddy three times in six months because of it. Though, depending on your weather and location, your experience with it will vary. I haven't tested all of Bird Buddy's add-ons yet, but I do think the Perch Extender and Suet Ball Feeder have been worth it. I finally attracted my local downy woodpeckers with the Suet Ball and Perch Extender, as well as larger birds like this red-bellied woodpecker, a bird I've been trying to attract with the Bird Buddy for months. So those are all of my thoughts on the Bird Buddy, and if you'd like to pick one up, I've left purchase links in the description below. If you think I got my review right, or if you think I got something wrong, let me know down in the comments and consider giving this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe for more Six Months Later reviews. For Six Months Later, I'm Josh Tedder. Thanks for watching.